We all take that big glowing partner in our sky for granted. It's just there. It's the backdrop for late night drives, the reason for werewolves, the thing poets write about. But what if tonight you went outside to look at it and it was just gone? Not a new moon, not hiding behind clouds. Just a blank, terrifying, empty patch of space. It's a chilling thought, right? But the reality is so much more terrifying than just a dark night. The second that silver disc vanished, a doomsday clock would start ticking for every living thing on Earth. We're not just talking about a lack of romantic mood lighting. We're going to walk through the immediate catastrophic chain of events that would be unleashed. Most people think the first problem would be the tides. And they're right. It would be an unthinkable disaster. But the real killer, the one that guarantees our extinction? That's something far more sinister. A problem most people have never even heard of. And what it would do to our minds, well, that might be the first thing to break. The first 24 hours. The Great Blackout and Global Panic The very first thing you'd notice isn't the water, it's the dark. Imagine a darkness so profound it feels heavy, like a blanket you can't push off. The kind of primordial blackness humans haven't experienced since we were hiding in caves, terrified of what was in the shadows. With no moonlight to wash out the sky, the stars would burst into view. The Milky Way, which most of us have only ever seen in pictures, would look like a blazing, terrifying river of light. It would be beautiful for about three seconds. Then the panic would set in. It's gone. It's just gone. Think about the sheer mind-breaking wrongness of it. People would pour into the streets, looking up, pointing at the empty space. You'd check your phone's star map app. It would show the moon is supposed to be right there. But the sky is just empty. The psychological impact would be immediate and devastating. Every phone network on the planet would crash. 911 would be useless. The news channels would be a mess of frantic, shouting faces with no answers. Governments would hold emergency press conferences, but what could they say? We're looking into it? The questions would tear us apart. Was it aliens? Did a black hole swallow it? Was it some secret, terrifying weapon? Is this an attack? Religious leaders would try to calm billions while just as many would declare it's the final judgment, the apocalypse. Society would fracture from pure, unadulterated fear, all before the first physical effect even hits us. While we were all panicking on every single coastline on the planet, the water would start to get weird. The next 72 hours, the rotting tides. Here's the thing, the tides wouldn't just stop, the sun still has gravity, but its pull on our tides is only about 40% as strong as the moon's. So our grand, powerful ocean tides, the ones that swell and crash twice a day, would be replaced by weak, lazy me tides. The oceans would become eerily still. And that's when the dying begins. We have to talk about the intertidal zone. It's that magical stretch of beach that's underwater at high tide and exposed to the air at low tide. Billions, maybe trillions, of creatures live only in this zone. Mussels, crabs, starfish, sea anemones, clams. They are the base, the absolute foundation, of the entire coastal food chain. Without a real tide, this entire ecosystem is gone. It just ceases to exist. Creatures that need to be underwater for hours are now left high and dry, and they bake in the sun. Creatures that need to be exposed to air to feed are now drowned, never to see the air again. Within days, every coastline on Earth would be lined with a thick, rotting mat of dead sea life. The smell? Can you imagine it? The stench of a trillion dying animals would be carried on the wind, a constant gagging reminder that our ocean is sick. But that's not even the worst part. Tides are the planet's heartbeat. They are a giant mixing spoon. They churn cold water from the deep with warm water on the surface. More importantly, they dredge up nutrients from the dark depths to feed the phytoplankton on the surface. And guess what? That phytoplankton produces more than half of the oxygen you are breathing right now. Without that mixing, the ocean begins to suffocate. The plankton starves and dies. The surface water gets hotter and hotter, fueling monster hurricanes. The deep water becomes a cold, dead, oxygenless void. The entire ocean food web, from the smallest shrimp to the great whales, would collapse. Their main food source is just 
gone. This isn't just an ecological disaster, it's a global food crisis starting on day two. The first year, a world of the blind. While the oceans are dying, the land is in total confusion. Think about the animals. Nocturnal predators like owls and leopards have evolved over millions of years to hunt by the faint light of the moon. Now, they are completely blind. Their prey is also blind. The delicate dance of predator and prey played out every night is broken. The human world would be just as broken. Our economies would be shattered. Coastal property values, zero. The shipping industry, chaos as tidal patterns vanish. The fishing industry, gone. And all that panic from day one, it hasn't stopped. It's only gotten worse as the world starts to starve and the air feels a little thinner every day. But humanity is tough, right? Maybe, just maybe, we could survive this. We could adapt. We could build inland farms, find new food sources, and learn to live in this new, dark, toxic world. Except, we wouldn't get the chance, because we haven't even gotten to the real killer. The long haul, the great wobble. All of that, the panic, the rotting tides, the starvation, the blind animals, it's all a sideshow. It's the opening act for the headliner. If you remove that hand, the top starts to wobble. Without the moon, Earth's tilt would begin to drift. It wouldn't be instant, but over thousands of years, and maybe much, much faster, our tilt could swing wildly. We might go from 23.5 degrees to 10 degrees, or 45 degrees, or even 80 degrees. What does that really mean? It means the word season becomes a joke. Imagine the equator, the hottest place on Earth, tilting so far away from the sun that it's plunged into a deep freeze, covered in ice for decades. Now, imagine Antarctica tilting so far toward in the sun that the ice caps melt completely, and the land becomes a scorching, uninhabitable desert. This is the extinction-level event. You cannot have agriculture. You cannot build cities. You cannot survive when you don't know this is the end of complex life. No question. We'd be a species of terrified, starving nomads wandering a planet that is actively, violently trying to kill us. We would be a failed experiment. It's a chilling thought. The moon isn't just a rock. It's the guardian that makes our stable, beautiful, predictable world possible. It's our anchor in the chaos of space. It really makes you want to go outside and just look up, doesn't it? If your mind is spinning with what ifs like this and you love exploring the biggest, most fascinating questions about our universe, do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. We've got so much more to unravel together.